Okay. Hello, and, and thank you for having me again. I've been here last year, so thanks for having me again. Uh, my name is Arunas, and I do a lot of things WordPress related. I've contributed to the core, I'm organizing meetups, and I'm generally active in WordPress community. But the main thing I do, I develop WordPress plugins. I've been doing that for a long time. The first version of WordPress that I've used is 2.63. So that was a long time ago. And I also teach at Konas College. I teach web development. I've been doing that for eight years. So this speech will, I hope, be a little bit educational too. Uh, and it is uh, developer-oriented, but it is a very, very, very basics of developer. Uh, just we have to have one thing straight. By developer, I mean a person who can write at least a little bit of code. So the story always starts like that. I have a WordPress site that's as nice, the way I want, but I just want to change this one little thing. And you always want that. It's always not enough what you can get by default. So how do you do that? The general rule is you do not touch code that is maintained by other people. So if there is a chance, that there will be an update, and there will be an update for WordPress core, for a plugin, or for a theme that you haven't created yourself. So in the ideal world, you shouldn't modify WordPress themes if you haven't built them yourself. Uh, use child, theme for, child themes for that. You shouldn't modify WordPress plugins directly. Uh, you can extend, usually, if the plugin developer has go done a good job, you can extend them using hooks and filter, uh, actions and filter hooks. And the same goes for the core. You really, really never modify the core unless you're doing a core contribution. So where do I put my awesome code? There are several ways to do that uh, in WordPress. Uh, you can do it in child theme. You can do that in functions PHP of your theme. Uh, that's what that file is meant for, right? Uh, there is also a plugin called My Custom Functions that you can download from WordPress.org, uh, or you can do a custom plugin. And all of them have their own advantages and disadvantages. So, do you know what a child theme is? Who knows who has ever used a child theme? Okay, that's good. I usually don't get that many hands on that. <laughs> So basically, it's a theme that is based on another theme. And what that means, that you can only change things that you need to change. So if that one template is bugging you because it doesn't do what you want, you can change that one. But you can still get updates for the theme itself. You don't need to redo the changes every time the theme updates. Uh, it has been introduced in, I think, WordPress 2.7, so that's like Stone Age. Uh, but it isn't used that often, and you, you really should use that. Uh, another place where you could put uh, your, co your code is functions.php. It's a file in any WordPress theme uh, where you can put custom code and it will be executed. Uh, but they have an asterisk on can, because that you can doesn't always mean that you should. Uh, and there are several reasons for that. Uh, this file is loaded on every page load. So the bigger file is, the more calls you have there, the bigger is impact on performance. Uh, it is very good if you have small and presentation-centric changes and theme-specific things. Uh, basically, the very, very general rule is uh, you don't put any code that you don't want to go away when you change the theme. Unle unless it's the code that is very, very theme-specific, you shouldn't use functions.php. And I've seen people doing that mistake over and over and over again. This is one real-life real example. 5,000 of lines in, fu in functions.php, and 56 of those lines were includes of other PHP files. A really, really, really bad idea. So, if not in the theme, where else? There is a, a plugin on WordPress.org. This is actually even the link. I probably shouldn't have put it there. But if you really want to, you can do that. 
And here, it allows you to paste your code in, uh, in VP Admin and say, I want this code to be run somewhere. Uh, this way, your code will stay when eventually you try to switch a theme. So you, you don't have a theme lock-in syndrome where you can't change your theme because you have so many customizations that would go away with it. Uh, but there is one big problem with it. It uses eval function to run that code. And if you know anything about PHP code, you know that's not really a good idea, too. So what else is left? Uh, you can do a custom plugin. Sounds a bit scary, right? It's a bit more, more to do. But it's actually not, not that hard. Uh, if compared with function, functions PHP, the difference is there are two differences. One difference is where you put the file and uh, what you put at the beginning of that file. It's basically, uh, it's just a PHP file that sits in VP content slash plugins directory. It doesn't even have to have its own directory. If it's just one file, well, usually we do that. Uh, and it just has a special format of comment at the beginning that gives WordPress information about what this plugin about, who created it, what version it is, a little bit of description, and things like that. Uh, if you want, these slides will be available online, and you can just copy-paste that and modify with your code. And that's it. You have a plugin. It will show up in your WordPress.vpadmin panel, and you can activate it. And this way, it will also stay if you change a theme or if you do anything. So if your changes are not theme-specific and you want them to stay, like custom post types and things like that, they could go in here. And so what to put into that plugin? In plugins, you basically put three types of code. Uh, you can use pluggable functions, action hooks, and filter hooks. Uh, have you ever heard of what a pluggable function is? Who has? OK. Less hands. Okay, so a pluggable function is a function that WordPress lets you to override as a plugin developer. Uh, and the way you do that is in your plugin, you just define that function with the same name. Uh, and if WordPress detects that there is a function with that name, it will use your function instead of the one that is included in the core. Uh, all of those functions can be found in file vp includes pluggable.php. So you can go there and look which ones you can overwrite. Uh, and it's, it is a nice thing to do uh, if, uh, if you want to modify that behavior, uh, but you have to be aware of one thing. Some other plugin might be already doing that. And this can be a compatibility issue. You have to always check if that function exists also, the same way that WordPress does that. Because if you don't, if you try to redefine the same function, what happens in PHP? A fatal error. And basically, widescreen of death. <laughs> uh, so the best way to extend WordPress is not using those, if at all possible, but using hooks. And when we start talking about hooks, we have to talk a little bit about uh, architecture, design patterns. Uh, whenever new people come into WordPress now, the first question is, where is my MVC? Because especially if you come from framework, that's the design pattern that you're used to. And uh, you probably heard the talk before that was talking about how MVC lets you test things better and things like that. The problem is that WordPress is not MVC. It has never intended to be MVC when it was developed, so it doesn't follow this pattern of models, views, and controllers. Instead, it has a completely different architecture that is called event-driven architecture. So basically, the process of creating a WordPress page on any page load is a long series of events that is happening. And what hook system does in WordPress it allows you to add your own custom code and attach it to those events. Uh, so whenever WordPress is doing something, you can say, also do something else, also do something else, 
also do something else. So a hook is basically a definition and te by telling WordPress, when you are doing this, also do that. And hooks are of two types in WordPress, uh, and they allow uh, third-party developers to extend uh, WordPress functionality. Uh, there are two different, two different types of them. Some of them are called action hooks, and some of them are called filter hooks. Uh, so what's the difference? Difference is of what they do. Uh, if you're talking about an action hook, it's uh, a code point where you can insert your own functionality. So basically, you can modify how WordPress works. You can run some additional code there. Uh, for example, if you use add action, VP head, uh, it will execute function my function at the point where WordPress is printing out uh, code in HTML head section. So basically, where the scripts, styles, and other kind of stuff happens. So if we do this example, uh, in your uh, head section, you'll have an HTML comment that says, hello. So that's an action hook. It lets you do some actions. Now, the difference with filter hooks is that they allow you to modify data that WordPress operates in, so to filter and change data. You can remove something, you can add something, you can change something, and so on. Uh, so for example, uh, if you use add filter the title, this piece of code will add to every title in WordPress whenever it shows a post or a menu uh, item or a page item, it will have a smiley face at the end. That's nice to have, right? Who doesn't love a good smiley face? Uh, another thing that is important when we are talking about hooks is we have to remember that almost always we are not the only ones that are hooking in. Basically, every plugin developer is using the system to add some modifications in WordPress. So you have 20 different plugins. You probably have like, I don't know, 200 different hooks that are being hooked into. So it's pretty safe to assume that, especially in popular cases, there might be five or 10 different functions that are attached to that hook. And sometimes you need to control in what order does that happen. And that's where pri priority comes in. It's a third argument in, in, in the filter and, uh, in filter and action functions. Uh, the higher number you put there, the later the hook will be executed. So if you want it to be, become earlier, you have to make a smaller number. For example, we have three filters here. Uh, one has priority 10, another has priority 9, and then th the third one has priority 90. So the second hook will be executed first, uh, the, first the first one second, and the third one at the end. So this way you can uh, tackle the, the problem of hierarchy, which one is executed first. So if you want to do something before WooCommerce does it, you have to hook in with a smaller priority. And if you want to do something after, you have to hook in with a bigger priority. Some hooks also pass additional parameters to the function that they are calling, so you can get some context, like post data and things like that. Uh, so for that, we have a fourth parameter where we can say that our function that we have built is expecting to get two or three pieces of information out of that hook. So for example, the title can pass two parameters. The first one is the title itself, the text of the title, and the second one is uh, post ID of the post that we are modifying. So uh, using that, you can then get the post object and do all kinds of different things with that. So for the first uh, line, we say we want both of them. We want the title and the ID. The second one says we only want the title. We don't care which post it is. And the third one, if we don't say anything, in filters, you will always get one argument, because that's the one that you want to modify and change. In action hooks, if you, de if you de declare nothing here, you will get zero. Yes? Uh, 
Okay, so how, how do we know how many we can get? Uh, we have to look at the hook itself and what it can pass. I'm going to talk a little bit later about where we find them. And depending on a hook, sometimes you can get even four and five different arguments. And there are hooks that have no arguments at all. But you, this you have to look into in the documentation, basically, or in the code itself. And it depends on, in, on, on different hook. So where I can hook? Uh, the short answer is everywhere. WordPress now has more than 2,500 2, different hooks that we, that we can use. And that goes up with every major release. I think it's my, maybe even 206, 2,600 th by, by this point. Uh, now, the ways to find them, there are two. There is a WordPress developer reference, and there is a part in there where all the hooks are listed. So you can go there and scroll through all 2,500. That doesn't work very well, but they have a search. So this way you can uh, narrow it down uh, using the terms that, you, that you're looking into. Hooks a lot of time have uh, uh, similar naming conventions as the functions that they are in. So if you, have, if you want to do something when post is saving, look for save post and things like that. Uh, and if that fails you, and it sometimes does, then you can always go into the code. And this is another thing. As a developer, you should read WordPress core code. Whenever you are doing something and you're hooking into, take five minutes of your time and go look at where that hook is and look what's co what code is around it. This way, it will be much easier for you because you will understand what core is doing at that point. And this is probably the, the best way to learn in-depth WordPress development that way. You just have to take a little bit of time. It doesn't take that much. Just whenever, if, if you, my general rule, rule that I say to my students is if you find a piece of code uh, on the internet, it doesn't matter that it works. You have to know why it works. Because only, this is the only way you learn and grow as a developer. So going looking into the code is also a very good place to find the hooks. So basically, you just go into the function that you're interested in and see what, what kinds of hooks are there. There's probably not that many functions in WordPress that don't have at least one hook in them. Uh, I've also put in these our live links, so you can click on them. Uh, WordPress.org would probably not like that very much, but I'm linking to GitHub. It's just because it has a better search. <laughs> And it's nicer to, to look in there, not, not the track link. One question. I yes. believe uh, a decently developed theme should also have certain hooks that they really must have due to the, uh, well, in line with the documentation. And uh, you can also add additional hooks in your theme, right? Uh, Oh, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be talking I'm, I'm about that. Yes, ahead. yes, Sorry. you, you, can, you ah, okay. can build your own hooks. That's that's one more thing. Okay, that's a bit more uh, upper level development. First, you learn how to hook into what's already there. But when you are developing your own plugin, you should also think about uh, that other people might want to extend your code, and allow ways for them to do that. Yeah. Oh, there is this this one plugin also. Uh, Query Monitor by John Blackburn. In my opinion, this is a plugin that no developer can work without. If you are developing for WordPress, you must have this in your development environment. It has a lot of awesome features, and one of them on every page load is a list of hooks that were executed and what functions were hooked into there. What plugin, what function has hooked? So you, it's awesome tool for debugging. It has a, a lot of other nice features, but in terms of hooks, it's also very, very nice because you can see live what's happening, what, which hooks are called and what's, what's hooked into them. Uh, uh, so sometimes you also want to trigger a hook. Something that WordPress does in the core, you want to do that same thing in your plugin. Apply a filter or do some action, and you can do that. Uh, if you want to make an action happen the same way it happens in WordPress core, you just write do action and the name of the action you want to do. 
just don't forget to pass the same arguments as the core does. So it, it will be cons consistent. The same way with filters. If you want to filter something, the same way WordPress does, and take uh, leverage of all the other plugins you have hooked into that filter, you can use apply filter with a filter name. So if you want to use the same filters that WordPress uses for the title, you write apply filter the title. And this is where the other things come in, the, the one that you asked about. Uh, you can make your own hooks. If you're developing a plugin or a theme and you want other developers to be able to extend that, and you should do want that. So that way, you can define your own hooks. You use the same functions, just the name of the hook is the one that you create. Usually prefix them with the name of your plugin. So if my plugin is named Arunas after my name, so I use a hook that is called Arunas some action or Arunas some filter. Or if their plugin is named uh, lorem ipsum, you use lorem ipsum something. And then you can write in documentations, if you want to change how my plugin handles that, please hook in there. WooCommerce does, EG Digital Downloads does that, pretty much every decent plugin does that. And if you're doing a plugin for WordPress.org, for other people to use, you should definitely do that for your plugin too. So to recap, do not modify the core, the themes and the plugins that you haven't built. Uh, extend using child themes, pluggable functions, or best of all, action and filter hooks. Uh, the best place for custom code is child theme for theme-specific code or a custom plugin for everything else. Uh, whenever you're developing a site, you can create a plugin that is used specifically for that site, and it contains all the code that is needed for that site to run. Uh, if it becomes big, it's usually better to uh, break it down into several ones, because then it's a little bit more reusable. You can use it on several different sites later on. Uh, action hooks allow you to modify functionality. Filter hooks allow you to modify data. Uh, and you have to always remember, you might not be the only one who is hooking in. Uh, and you can use hook triggers to make your own code extendable. So you can create your own hooks. And last thing, there always is a hook for that. Great, thank you. Um, so. yeah. Now, um, we've got another half an hour, so oh, I hope I you have so fast. <laughs> lots of questions, right? Yes. Um, but before, before we go into questions, uh, I should just mention that in five minutes, uh, in A1, we will have um, the presentation WooCommerce for charity, WooCommerce for value with Anna Boberg and Jakob Pernvik. Um, yeah. Well, you were first, and then we're waiting. Yeah. I could probably Google this, but you mentioned uh, server load uh, with uh, using uh, custom functions and uh, uh, required yes. files in, in your functions file. Is and there a benefit in hooks and fi or filters in the uh, server load? Or uh, basically, if you have everything in functions PHP, it's a huge file you have to load every time. And if you had Zincludes in that, uh, it, lo it, it also does all those file reads every time. So that already takes some time. Uh, the way you can do it, hooks and filters, you can include stuff conditionally, only that one that action is being happening. So if you have include inside the function, it makes it better in terms of performance. These days, there, there are a lot of uh, themes and plugins which rely heavily on JavaScript. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can you uh, like give some information or some words on how which which part of JavaScript can we use from WordPress and, and what are our best practices in that? Like we can use VXJS and stuff. Uh, and well there are a lot of issues that come from uh, JavaScript uh, conflicts. Well, Jav JavaScript is, is a bit more complicated than that. I'm more of a back-end developer, so I can't talk extensively about JavaScript. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know a little bit of the way around it, but it's not my specialty, so I can't. 
Hi. Uh, <coughs> a couple of years ago, when uh, uh, Google Tag Manager was uh, launched, mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't a good hook to have the code right after the body tag, uh, mm -hmm. but this was some years ago. So is it possible today to have to insert code just directly under the body tag with a hook? Uh, that depends on your theme. Okay. Because because this because this is very template-y stuff, yeah. and it should be handled by the theme. Okay. Uh, usually, uh, uh, traditionally, we didn't have a hook after the body t after the beginning of body tag. We we have one. We always have one uh, at the end of head and at the end of body. But at the beginning of body, not a lot of themes do that. And uh, you should probably, if if you have a problem with that, you should open an issue request for them. Just please add it there. Yeah. Thank you. OK, uh, I have a question uh, regarding uh, profiling. Uh, if you have a lot of, uh, since there are 2,500 hooks, uh, yeah. uh, how can you profile? Do you have any short uh, help on that or, or short description on how, how you could profile easily? I guess you were well. In, in terms pro of profiling, because of the action-driven, uh, event-driven system, it's kind of hard to profile WordPress in general. And that's why, that's why sometimes doing MVC is better, and, and doing, doing things like that is better. So uh, I don't have a good advice on that. Sorry. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Okay, thanks for allowing me the second question. Uh, okay, so w one way you mentioned is to check whether a, fun a, a function is already defined for a pluggable function or, or mm -hmm. for a hook. So is there another way we can, uh, any other best practice that we, we can use to avoid conflicts with other, f uh, other plugins and uh, other code? Uh, one thing is you always use hooks because hooks, they, well, with hooks you can hook, both of you can hook into the same place not as with a pluggable function. Another thing is, if you use any kind of libraries, always have conditional checks like class exists and things like that to make sure that that class hasn't been loaded. Because if it has, you will get fatal error again. So for classes and functions, uh, always prefix everything. Uh, if you don't care about 5.2 PHP, use namespaces. If you do, as you should, because WordPress still supports that, then you have to prefix everything so you have your own namespace at least that way. So namespacing, using hooks, and check conditional checking for every external library. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, then thank you very much, Arunas. This has been very interesting. Thank you. <laughs>